all right uh, language and brain this is the next chapter so um, first of all we start with neurolinguistics now the study of relationship between language and the brain is called neurolinguistics right the uh, study of relationship between language and the brain right now what is that relationship so we'll be just talking about it uh, throughout the the chapter uh, so um, if we look at the relationship like we we know that language that lies uh, in the brain or it is present in the brain right and there are some of the examples which indicate that it is there in certain parts like uh, we have an example that a huge metal rod had gone through the front part of mr uh, gave brain but his language abilities were unaffected right now uh, the point of this uh, amazing tale is that uh, while language may be located in brain it is clearly not situated right at the front like language is there in the brain but it is not everywhere it, it has its own specific parts so uh, those are language uh, related parts and language is only present in those parts uh, later on when we talk about language aphasia so we will be talking about uh, uh, about the parts in there you can say uh, what if they, they get injured now uh, if you look at an image of brain uh, this one you can see uh, th this has been taken from uh, you can consider from the top of the head like the skull has been removed and then uh, you can just look at, uh, at it from the top right uh, you can see there are two parts one is left brain and the other is right brain or we can call them left hemisphere and right hemisphere now uh, the functions of brain are the the tasks which are performed by brain ha have been assigned to both of these hemispheres like those are not actually performed by by the, uh, the brain as a whole rather different parts of uh, brain they perform different very functions or different tasks right and uh, when we uh, just try to look at those functions or when we try to look at those uh, uh, tasks performed by different parts of brain uh, the first broader division that is of left hemisphere and right hemisphere the, some of the functions have been outlined here like analytical thought logic language science and math those are actually attributed to the left side or left hemisphere of, of the brain right and uh, on the other hand uh, on the other hand if we just look at um, holistic thought uh, uh, intuition creativity art and music now these are assigned to a right hemisphere uh, of the brain like left part that is uh, uh, actually specified for analytical thought logic language science and math and there are so many other functions which are uh, you can say uh, similar to these and they, they are assigned to uh, left hemisphere uh, but right hemisphere that is thought as a whole like holistic thought uh, intuition creativity art and music and there are so many other uh, tasks which are performed by right hemisphere but here the actual thing which we want to look at is that language that is actually in uh, left hemisphere of the brain right so language that is in the left hemisphere of the brain or uh, language related tasks or activities or functions are performed by left hemisphere right whereas if we look at uh, art and music like music that is also uh, having sounds but that is there in right hemisphere so uh, we will have to keep one thing in mind that we whenever we are talking about language so it is not only uh, sounds right it is the whole system that is of uh, i can say uh, maybe uh, in spoken form or in written form or it can be the sign language right and it is not only you can say when we say spoken form so it is not only just speaking language or it is not only listening for uh, listening language rather it is everything right so that whole system that is actually dealt in left in the hemisphere of the brain but if we talk about uh, sound so those sounds which are non-linguistics are dealt there in the right hemisphere of the brain that, that is why music etc that is actually dead there in right hemisphere now uh, keep in mind uh, 
our brain uh, that is actually divided in two parts broadly the uh, one is left hemisphere and the other is right hemisphere we are talking about brain not mind right so uh, left hemisphere that is actually responsible for uh, language related activities and functions and uh, whatever we are going to discuss further that would be only uh, the the left hemisphere of the brain because we are actually dealing with it okay now if we look at this left hemisphere only uh, there are four areas which have been highlighted just look at them uh, you, you can see the lines and then number one two three and four right and then those uh, uh, you can say numbers have been given names as well now number one that is broca's area number one uh, the the blue area that you can see there in the uh, front part that is actually broca's area and uh, the the second part which is here this one that is actually wernicke's area right and uh, uh, the third one that is this one is actually motor cortex and the fourth which is sort of uh, wires or you can say cables or maybe it is uh, uh, probably uh, sort of uh, fibers now that is actually uh, arcuate fasciculus right now these are uh, four different uh, parts which you'll have to just uh, look at right whenever we are talking about language so these four parts of brain are dealing with language right so uh, we can talk about no functions of these uh, four parts like this is the left hemisphere of your brain in this left hemisphere there are four different parts which are of importance when we are talking about language the first one that is broca's area the second one is wernicke's area third is motor cortex and fourth is arcuate fasciculus now these four parts are important now what are their functions when we talk about language now first of all we have broca's area now broca's area like uh, the name that is after a uh, french surgeon paul broca he reported in 1960s that damage to this specific part of brain was related to extreme difficulty in producing language now it was noted that damage to the corresponding area on the right hemisphere had no such effect therefore language ability must be located in the left hemisphere and broca's area is uh, crucially involved in the production of speech now there are three points only number one that when uh, uh, paul broca he found damage to a specific part in left hemisphere the person he had some problem in language production right now this gives us uh, an idea that uh, there is a part in left hemisphere that is actually dealing with language right and uh, that part deals only with language production so like one is the left hemisphere that is having language in it secondly it is not the whole left hemisphere rather there is a part right that is dealing with language and third is uh, that particular or that specific part is not dealing with language as a whole <coughs> rather that is dealing only with language production so there will be some other parts which are dealing with uh, other aspects of language language comprehension and uh, certain other things right so uh, 1960s paul broca he found out that there is a specific part in left hemisphere of the of the brain and if something happens to that so language production that would be uh, uh, affected so language in left hemisphere and in left hemisphere a specific part that is dealing with language production right a specific part not le left hemisphere as a whole and secondly uh, there would be different parts which are dealing with different aspects of language okay now then next we have wernicke's area 
Now, if uh, yeah, like Carl Wernicke, a German, uh, German doctor, reported in 1970s that damage to this part of brain was found among patients who have speech comprehension difficulties. So, language ability must be located in left hemisphere, and Wernicke's area is crucially involved in the understanding of speech. Now, in both of these cases, you see the first point is language is present in left hemisphere. Like if the same thing is, uh, is happening uh, to the uh, uh, same part in right hemisphere, so language is not going to get any effect or there wouldn't be any problem with language because language is in left hemisphere. And uh, there is a specific part that is called Wernicke's part and it is named after Carl Werning, who uh, uh, just uh, uh, can say found out that this part was actually uh, uh, related to language comprehension. Right, so Broca's area that is related to language production, Wernicke's area is uh, uh, dealing with language comprehension. Okay, the next is motor cortex. Now, if we look at this part, uh, you have seen in the um, image that that I just displayed in the beginning. Now this motor cortex is the area that controls movement of muscles. Uh, it controls the articulatory muscles of the face, jaw, tongue, larynx, etc. Right? So it is responsible for the physical articulation of the speech. Right? So uh, language first is there in the brain. It is comprehended. It is produced and then there is the this physical articulation whenever we are speaking or whenever we are writing now that part is actually the physical articulation uh, of language now if you remember phonetics and phonology you would have seen that how different articulators are involved in articulation now that articulation is only possible if motor cortex uh, cortex is working properly so an area in in brain that is dealing with this physical articulation so language is not only physical articulation rather it is there somewhere uh, you can say in the mind uh, uh, in, in the brain that something is happening that is uh, production and then comprehension but this part that is actually dealing with the physical articulation like whatever is happening uh, in Wernicke's area or Broca's area, then that would be coming here to motor cortex, right? So motor cortex then would be actually helping us physically articulate uh, uh, language. The next part is arcuate fasciculus. The arcuate fasciculus is the bundle of nerve fibers that connect Wernicke's area to Broca's area. Now, uh, if we just go back to the same image that was uh, of brain, you would get to know that what these areas are and what is their function. Now, see, this is left hemisphere. We are having four different areas. This is area one, two, three, and four. The first one is Broca's area, and we have discussed that its function is to produce language. So, all those words. Uh, which we we are articulating or the sentences or the longer uh, expressions which we have those are produced here at this area which is called Broca's area then we also listen uh, uh, and hear so many people talking uh, and that is understood by us so when we try to understand this it is understood here in uh, Wernicke's area, right? And then this this part, uh, the motor cor uh, cortex part, that is actually responsible for physical uh, articulation of uh, language, right? And you can see these uh, fiber type uh, cords. Now these are actually arcuate fasciculus, which are linking Broca's area to the Wernicke's area, like whatever we we comprehend here in uh, Wernicke's area then that is sent to Broca's area so that its response can be generated uh, you can simply take it like at a very surface level 
uh, for your understanding you can just take it as if someone asks you a question so that enters your ear and reaches here to your Wernicke's area and this Wernicke's area would comprehend what was the message and then it just sends the signal through arcuate fasciculus to the Broca's area so that a response can be generated and then that response would be sent to uh, your motor cortex so that it can be physically articulated now this is how language works uh, or uh, this is how brain that is functioning uh, when we are dealing with language okay now after these four uh, different points we can just get back to uh, the lecture the localization view now uh, we have talked about uh, left hemisphere and right hemisphere then we talked about different areas in left hemisphere which are uh, dealing with language now specific aspects of language ability can be accorded uh, specific locations in the brain now this is called uh, localization uh, view right the brain activity involved in hearing a word understanding it then saying it would allow a definite pattern right yes the brain activity involved in hearing a word understanding it then saying it would follow a definite pattern now what is that pattern the word is heard and comprehended via Wernicke's area the signal is transferred uh, uh, through arcuate fasciculus to Broca's area preparations are made to produce the signal in Broca's area and a signal is sent to part of uh, the motor cortex to physically articulate a word and then our articulators those articulate uh, a sound a word or maybe the larger expressions uh, we have discussed this in uh, phonetics and phonology that how those articulators work uh, to articulate uh, whatever we want to say right so these are uh, this is the you can say path that would be taken like um, whatever you hear that first goes to Wernicke's area from there signal is transferred to Broca's area for response Broca's area that produces whatever is to be uh, you can say produced and then it uh, goes to uh, you can say motor cortex so that uh, physical articulation can take place right okay now the next is uh, uh, we have some problems in language production right uh, one of them is the tip of the tongue uh, the feeling that we know the word but it just won't come to the surface like we uh, want to say a word right maybe the word would be having a bit difficult uh, uh, phonological orientation or would be a bit difficult to articulate now the word is in our mind we know we can uh, uh, like what the word uh, means and how it to uh, how is it to be articulated but still we have a feeling that the word would be actually difficult to be articulated like i wouldn't be able to articulate the word and sometimes it happens that we are not able to even articulate that word now studies of this phenomena have shown that speakers generally have uh, an accurate phonological outline of the word like we know the word right what the word is and uh, what is its phonological orientation or outline and they can get the initial sound correct and mostly know the number of syllables in the word like we as i said we know the word right now it mainly occurs with uncommon words and names it suggests that our word uh, storage system may be partially organized on the basis of some phonological information uh, and that some words in the store are more easily retrieved from the other as i said that um, a bit difficult uh, words in terms of phonolo uh, phonological orientation those are actually the words which we feel would be hard to articulate right so uh, uh, like the point can be that words are stored in our brain and those are actually on the basis of some phonological uh, maybe uh, orientations or basis like 
the categories of of the words are uh, on the basis of some phonological categorizations or similarities or differences like the words of same uh, uh, probably phonological uh, orientation would be placed in one category and the words of other phonological orientation similar words of other phonological orientations would be placed in some other category now what what happens to them like why we are not able to articulate them is because there is a sort of similarity and what are those words then when we uh, make mistakes in this retrieval process like we are not able to actually retrieve the words right uh, when we make mistakes in this retrieval process there are often strong phonological similarities between the target word we are trying to say and the mistake we actually produce now look at the example fire extinguisher now extinguisher is the word right and when we produce it we we may produce fire dis, uh, distinguisher now look at extinguisher and distinguisher now phonologically the words are very similar to each other apart from a little uh, uh, difference right so when we try to articulate uh, fire extinguisher like extinguisher we just get hold of a very similar word and we uh, retrieve it that is distinguisher right so maybe it is the problem in choosing the word from that category we just go there and instead of picking the the right word we just uh, pick the word which is very close placed very close to it right so you can take simply like you are, you are having a basket full of balls for example right and you you supposed to pick a ball from there and from the basket and uh, when you just go there pick a ball so that was actually not the ball that you were supposed to pick rather it was the ball next to it right so similarly like you can imagine that the words in the brain are similarly placed in uh, different uh, you can say groups or categories or boxes or uh, baskets you can say and when you uh, try to re retrieve a word sometimes it happens that you just go there you pick a word but it is not the word which you are supposed to pick you are supposed to pick the word which was uh, along with uh, like which was placed very close to this uh, th that word which you picked okay now mistakes of this type are sometimes referred to as malapropism like this name has been given now that name is because of a character from uh, sheridan uh, sheridan's play and name of that character was mrs malaprop right now mrs malaprop she would be actually having these near misses you can say this is a near miss right so we missed the word but it was a very near miss we almost reached there but we couldn't pick the right words it was a near miss so mrs malaprop she also used to have such sort of near misses and those near uh, that near miss would uh, create comic effect whenever she would be using it okay now uh, like in these uh, slips of tongues uh, like uh, now the next problem which we can have the previous one this one was tip of the tongue the next uh, problem which we can have that is slip a slip of the tongue right now slip of the tongue uh, that is also called spoonerism the previous one was, was called malapropism and this one is spoonerism and it is named after william spooner now uh, if you look at these two examples the concept would become clear to make a long shory start or to have hissed all my mystery classes now what what has happened over here some of the sounds have been just uh, placed or you can say replaced with some uh, nearby sounds like if you look at the first example it is to make a long shory start like it had to be the sound here where you have just put her right so it, it would have been to make a long story short now this the sound this one has been actually uh, replaced with this her sound right so both of these have been interchanged now this interchanged 
like these interchange sounds they are actually uh, because of slip of the tongue similarly when you say you have hissed all my mystery classes now uh, here it is uh, ha sound which was supposed to be here uh, in history and uh, this ma sound was supposed to be here in mist right so actually it was you have missed all my history classes but because of some uh, uh, confusion in the sounds like in uh, one sound that has replaced the other and the other one has gone to uh, the place of first one so that that is actually what we are saying like we you have haste all my mystery classes like the, these are examples of slip of the tongue right so in slip of the tongue phenomena or in spoonerism what happens that two sounds are actually being interchanged but in tip of the tongue phenomena the sounds were not being interchanged rather when when we were retrieving the word we retrieved a wrong word which was though very close to the actual word but that was not the appropriate word here we have picked the words we have retrieved them but while articulating actually we have just interchanged some of their sounds okay most of the sli slips attributed uh, to him mean uh, william spooner uh, involve the interchange of two initial sounds like uh, two sounds uh, are interchange you can look at mist and history so initial sound of history has gone to uh, uh, you can say mist and similarly the initial sound of mist that has gone to uh, the initial sound of history so that interchange is there okay then is um, we can have some other errors which are also part of this slip of, of the tongue we have a preservation error now in preservation error what happens we carry over a sound from one word to the next we carry over the sound uh, as is black blocks now this la sound has been carried over to this word as well like it was black boxes but in preservation what we have done we are we have preserved this sound la sound and we have taken it over to the next word so from black boxes to black blocks okay the next is anticipation error now when a sound is brought forward uh, in in preservation what did we do we actually took a sound from a beginning word to the next word like we carried it over but in anticipation error what we do we bring us a, a sound forward as is nomen numeral now it is actually roman numeral so what we have done uh, we have um, uh, you can say taken this sound na sound uh, and we have placed it here right so it has become nomen numeral instead of roman numeral this later sound that actually was anticipated first and it has taken uh, you can say a uh, place of this ra over here so in preservation the sound from first word is taken over to the second word but in anticipation uh, the sound of second word that was anticipated in the beginning and placed uh, in the uh, uh, in first word okay similarly there is a top of t right a top of t is uh, like this sound of t has been anticipated and put here on the place of uh, uh, ka sound right now high, highly played player right now it's not highly played player it is highly paid player but this sound that actually uh, was anticipated this la sound was anticipated and placed here uh, on the play, uh, play place of you can say play uh, paid uh, the interchange of the a word final sound can also be there like stick nef instead of stick nef or uh, loop before you leak right so that is again interchange look before you leap so 